So in this video, we're gonna start building up our NPC AI. And for our first step, what we're gonna do is create a state macro. It's a little bit different than the flow macros that we've been creating. And that state macro is gonna have different states. It's gonna have a wander state, it's gonna have a chase state, it's gonna have an attack state, it's also gonna have a dead state. And what this is gonna allow us to do is nicely and easily control what state our AI is in and what it's doing. It also visually gives us a really nice clue of what's going on and it avoids entanglement of our code. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna press add component and instead of adding a flow machine, I'm gonna add a state machine. Open that up. You can see it looks very, very similar to a flow machine. Then in my macros folder, I'm gonna right click, create bolt state macro. And I'm just gonna name this one NPC AI because acronyms, why not? Now, if I go back to my flow graph, you can notice that it's become a state graph. So if you right click, you can see you get three options here. So I gotta create flow state. This is the one I'm gonna use. This is gonna create a state where I can put a flow graph into it. The create super state allows me to put a state graph inside of a state graph. So you can have nested state graphs. And this other one here of create any state, we're gonna get to that later when it comes to programming the death of our character. But for right now, we're gonna stick with create flow state. Now that I've created that flow state, if I click on it, go over to my graph inspector, I can then name this flow state. And I'm just gonna name this wander. And then I'm gonna repeat this process and create three more states like so. And I'm gonna name these. This one's gonna be named chase, attack, and this one will be dead. Now for this video, we're only gonna work on this wander state. We're not even gonna build up the transitions into the other states. We're gonna do that in the next video. So our next video will cover how to create this chase flow state and the extra pieces that we need to add to our character. Before we get into the wander state, I wanna drag and drop this state macro onto our NPC. So I click on my NPC, come down to my state machine. I'm gonna drag that flow macro in. So now that state macro is attached to my NPC. If I come back to my state graph window here, I'm gonna double click on the graph to go full screen. And then I'm gonna double click into the wander. And this is gonna take me into that flow state. And you can see here that I have three different events. I have the on enter state, and this is code, if you were to drag this out, code that would run when the state is first entered. You can think of it as a start event, if you will. The update, just like it does with flow macros, this is code that's gonna get run every frame. And the on exit state, it's fairly self-explanatory. This is code that's gonna get run when you leave this state. So it's a nice way to kind of tidy up or do any last minute bits of coding. For the wander state, I'm gonna get rid of both the exit and the enter states and just have my update event. Now it's not gonna be immediately obvious why I wanna do this, but I'm gonna to wanna to run this state as a coroutine. And I'm gonna do that because I'm gonna have a wait statement in the middle of my flow macro. And I can only do that if it's run as a coroutine. So up here in my graph inspector, if you're not in full screen, you can go to your graph inspector. But if you're in full screen, the graph inspector shows up and I'm gonna click here on the coroutine. You notice my icon changes a little bit. I get a couple arrows there. Now, ultimately what I'm trying to do with this state is I'm trying to pick a random position somewhere in the scene and then tell the nav agent to go to that location. So my end action is going to be to set the destination for our nav mesh agent. So just like I've done before, I've got my starting point here, which is my update. And I'm gonna create my ending point over here. I'm gonna look for nav agent, set destination. This is gonna be my final command, my final unit in the flow graph. So every frame we're gonna come in, we're gonna do some logic. The end goal is we're gonna set the destination of our nav mesh agent. So the first thing we're gonna do is create the code to generate the random position. So I'm gonna come down here, right click to add a unit and I'm gonna look for random inside unit circle. So what this is gonna do is return a vector two that is somewhere within a circle that's got a radius of one, which is effectively what I want. So I'm gonna grab this, pull this out and I'm gonna search for vector two, and I'm gonna look for vector two x. So I'm gonna get the x coordinate of this. So I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna do it in the y direction. I'm doing this because my random is giving me a vector two, whereas my set destination over here requires a vector three. I'm gonna use these two components and create a vector three. So I'm gonna right click, new vector three, and I'm gonna drag the x into the x. In this case, the y is actually gonna be the z coordinate because my terrain is more or less in the x, z coordinate plane. Now this vector is rather short because the random gave us a point within a unit circle. And we want our character to go farther than just one unit at a maximum. We want this to be able to go a good distance. If the 
distance that the character moves is too short. It'll look like the character is just kind of jiggling all over the place and doesn't give a very realistic look. So what we're gonna do is take this vector and we're gonna search for multiply and we want the multiply generic. And the reason we want the multiply generic and not the multiply vectors is we're gonna multiply this vector by a scalar or just a float value, if you will. So I'm gonna right click over here, add unit, and I'm gonna search for float literal. And I'm gonna connect that up to the other half of my multiply unit. Now for my purposes, I found that a float of about 20 works pretty well. That means at a maximum, these AI units are gonna wander 20 units away from where they currently are. So now we have a random position, but we want that position to be relative to where our NPC is. So I'm gonna right click up here and I'm gonna look for transform position. And I wanna get the transform position. And since this state macro is on the NPC, we can leave it as self. And we're gonna take that vector three, we're gonna drag it out and we're gonna add. So we're gonna add, take this position and we're gonna add this random vector to it. And what that'll give us is a random position somewhere near the location of our NPC. I and mean, the next thing we wanna do, we wanna make sure that this new random position is actually on our nav mesh. We don't wanna to try to send our character off the nav mesh and to some place they can't reach. They could end up in a corner just kind of stuck there. We wanna make sure that this is on the nav mesh. So I'm gonna right click, add unit, and I'm gonna look for a sample position. And I'm gonna choose this first option here, nav mesh dot sample position. And we're gonna take this new position, drag it into the source position. And what this unit is gonna do is it's gonna check and see if this location is on the nav mesh and if it's not, it's gonna search for a nearby location. And that's what this max distance is it's how far away from this original source position can it search for a new position. Now in my case, I'm gonna make it pretty generous. I'm gonna make it 20. So the larger the max distance is, potentially the longer it takes to find a position on the nav mesh. But I wanna make it big enough to make sure that my AI can actually find a position on the nav mesh. Area mask is the areas in the nav mesh that this agent can go to. So if I click down here and search for nav agent area mask. I get this option here of nav mesh agent dot area mask and I want to get that. That's going to get the mask from the agent that this is on. I'm going to drag that in here. So what this node is going to do is it's going to look and see is this position on the nav mesh. If not, it's going to search a distance of 20 around that point and it's going to return a boolean whether it was able to find a position or not. So next thing we need to do, we need to take this boolean and put it into a branch. I'm going to connect that flow like so and that's going to connect here to our set destination. So now we need to finally tell the nav mesh agent where to go. And so I'm gonna drag down this last option here on our sample position. I'm gonna drag this down from our sample position. And I'm gonna go here to nav mesh hit, go out. And I'm gonna find this position get. So I'm gonna get the position that this sample position unit found. That's gonna return a vector three. And I'm gonna send that into our set destination. So this is good enough for us to find a random position somewhere near our NPC and set the nav mesh agent's destination to that location. But if we just connect this immediately up to our update event, this is gonna run every single frame, which means every single frame, the NPC is gonna try to go to a different location. And effectively what we're gonna get is a NPC that's just jiggling around and not doing much of anything. Now one way to fix our NPC jiggling all over the place, constantly looking for a new position, is to add in a weight. Now there's a weight unit in both, but it doesn't necessarily work the way I thought it would. And there's a command that works much, much better and that's called cooldown. Now there's lots of options here and I'm not gonna get into too many of them, but basically this is a timer that can be reset and run over and over again. So what I wanna connect here is the completed. So when this countdown has completed, I want to run this code. And I also wanna set its duration. Now I could just set it to one or two or three and that's how long I'd wander for. But I think this is a good opportunity for a little bit more randomness that doesn't really cost as much of anything in terms of effort or complexity. So I'm gonna right click over here, add unit, and I'm gonna search for random range. And you can see that there's what looks like two identical commands. But the top one takes floats as inputs and gives a float as an output. Bottom one takes integers as inputs and gives an integer as an output. I'm gonna choose the top one. I want floats coming out of this unit. So I'm gonna connect that up to my duration. I'm gonna connect up the flow and I'm connecting it to this top arrow, not the reset arrow. And I'm gonna put the minimum at two and maybe the maximum at four. That way I'm gonna wait between two and four seconds before I search for another position. Let's connect up the flow and see what we get. If I go into my scene view, see that I kind of walk around, stop walk around, stop. 
And that's getting a lot better. That's much better than what we had before. We got something that looks a lot more realistic. This looks like somebody who might be patrolling and just searching the area. So this may be perfectly fine for what you're trying to accomplish in your game. And if that is, great. I'll see you in my next video. If not, I'm gonna add one more step of sophistication to what we're doing here. That's gonna check and see if our NPC has actually made it to the location before we search for a new location. So back in my flow graph here, we're gonna add quite a few different units here. I'm gonna move my update event to make some space. I'm gonna disconnect the flow. We're gonna make use of several different nav mesh functions. So I'm gonna right click to add a unit and I'm gonna search for nav agent remaining distance. So this returns a float value of how far the agent is from its target. And we're gonna compare this and see if it's less than a certain value. And if it's less than that certain value, then we can assume that we are next to or close to our target and we're gonna look for another target to move towards. I'm gonna to drag this out and go down here to less or equal. And I'm gonna choose two. Now you can make it smaller than that, but if you make it too small, if you make it smaller than the radius of your nav agent, your nav agent may never actually get that close to its target because of the dimensions of your nav agent. So this would seem like this is good enough. However, there's another issue that comes up with a nav mesh system, and that is that the nav mesh system doesn't necessarily execute all of its commands in the same frame that they were called. Meaning when I set a destination, it may take a couple frames for the nav mesh system to locate or discover the path from point A to point B. And while it's doing that, we don't wanna set another new destination and slow it down all over again. If you have a lot of nav mesh agents, that can cause a problem because you're constantly calculating new paths and you never give it time to actually finish its path. So we're gonna add another command here, add unit, and we're gonna search for nav agent path pending. And this just returns a Boolean. Is the nav mesh agent currently looking for a path? Yes or no. So we only wanna get a new destination if the path pending is not true and this less than or equal to is true. So we're gonna drag this out. We're gonna come down here to negate. That's just gonna flip the Boolean from false to true or true to false. And then we're gonna combine these two in an and statement. I'm gonna move these over, make a little room, and I'm gonna put in a branch. I'm gonna connect up my Boolean. I'm gonna connect my flow, like so. Now this may be more complicated than what you need for your effect, but what this is gonna do is help optimize our performance, making sure that we're not asking our nav mesh system for more than what we need. Now you will notice here that all of our boxes over here are still grayed out. They are gonna run, but because it's connected to this cooldown, they're not gonna constantly run, and Bolt shows, us, shows that to us as grayed out units. I'm going to double click to go back to our view. I'm going to push play and let's see what happens. I go to my scene view again. And you can see that my character is getting a little bit farther than it used to. Now, because now we're not getting a new position until it gets to its current destination. So once again, by adding these cooldown and these other nav mesh agent commands, we're optimizing our system. So we're using a few less resources to move our AI unit around the scene and maintaining a more lifelike, more realistic effect. So in our next video, we're gonna to continue to work in our state macro and continue to build up the logic that's in that state macro. And we're gonna do that by creating the transitions into our chase state. That's gonna require us to create a couple of flow macros and a little bit more structure on our NPC player. It's gonna be one more video after that and we're gonna flesh out the chase state itself so that our NPC can chase after our player. So thanks for joining and I hope to see you at the next video.